we are back. And joining us now is Brad Mattis, host of Facing Life Head On. Brad, how are you doing? Good. How are you? Great. Uh, so glad you could join us today from Cincinnati, even though the Reds did beat the Red Sox in 75. But that's okay. We, you know, we haven't forgiven you, but that's, that's just how we are in Boston. Don't you forget it. <laughs> we can't. Hey, well, congratulations. I'm sorry? Obviously not, yeah, after all these years. <laughs> hey, congratulations on the Emmy nomination for Facing Life Head On. Well deserved. We love it here at Catholic TV. Tell us about the show. Well, we're a, a weekly half-hour TV program. Uh, we really depict the title of the show called Facing Life Head On. My guests are people who have faced serious life and death situations and decisions that involve the life issues, uh, abortion, uh, euthanasia, cloning, embryonic stem cell research, you know, various things that deal with those life issues. And we try to pair them up with an expert in that field. For instance, we did a program on abortion and breast cancer, the connection. I interviewed a woman who found out she was terminal two days before the interview because of a past abortion and, and the breast cancer it caused. And then I also interviewed a breast surgeon to give us some biological information. So we give a heartwarming, uh, real life relevant situation to the viewers. And then we provide uh, some education to that program also. So our goal is to reach uh, those who may not be with us on the abortion issue. So it's not really a preachy format, but it's one that tugs at the heartstrings and then provides education so that they can be pro-life and that that equips them to share this information with others. Brad, uh, Facing Life Head On, of course, airs here on Catholic TV on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. You know, why is it important to, uh, to promote the value of life in a discussion show format? Well, there's so much that can be revealed in a one-on-one -on -one discussion versus just uh, depicting somebody with camera. Uh, we do many aspects. We use uh, B-roll and we go to the guest home or place of work. So we really get a feel for what their life is like in the situation. But it's not till you have those quiet moments of one-on-one -on -one talking about that situation that they were in or are experiencing. Do you really get a feel for what the, the, their life is like, actually? It's interesting, Brad, because I think in today's world, a lot of us think, sometimes that we're all alone in promoting life issues and yet polls are really showing that actually we're in the majority how should we go out there and promote these pro-life issues well I'm, I'm glad you said that Jay because actually the third consecutive Gallup poll shows that more people call themselves pro-life than pro-abortion and that is great news and so what we need to do is be cognizantly aware that we are the majority and we need to speak out and persuade other people to join us because what we have are the facts behind us. So education is central to changing the heart and soul of a nation on abortion. And education is the foundation on which you build political and legislative victories. Uh, just last night, yesterday, with all the primaries was a, a case in point with that, uh, why education is so important so that pro-life candidates who are making laws can get elected. Brad, topics like you know stem cell uh, research, uh, the medical procedures, these things can be difficult to get across to people who don't have the technical expertise. So how does Facing Life head on merge education and enter entertainment so as to share this very important information? Well, uh, Father Faden, what I did was interview I, um, a young girl, she was 16 at the time, Jackie Rabin. She'd been in a car accident and was paralyzed from the waist down. She had uh, adult stem cells taken out of the, no the lining of her nose, and they put them right on the place of impact. And within two weeks, she was crawling. And I interviewed her in her home, and then we went over to where she does therapy, and we filmed her walking with the aid of uh, braces, something that would have never been possible without that specific treatment. We also pointed out then that embryonic stem cell research, which kills human embryos for science, has been a total failure. So seeing is believing for a lot of viewers, and when they see Jackie Rabin walking, 
in therapy, they understand the impact of what we're talking about. Brad, why do you do this? Uh, what, what in your life has impacted you to say that this is something that I think is extremely important, which we all do, but why do you do it? Well, uh, Jay, I got involved in the abortion issue when I was a senior in high school about 10 years ago. <laughs> I'm just waiting to see if you guys believe that or not. Actually, it was a lot longer than 10 years ago. But um, I was always pro-life, but the more I learned about the topic, the more education I got the stronger and more passionate I felt about it. And I just, uh, once you were involved, it kind of sucked me in and I felt a calling uh, by God to do whatever we could to save lives because, you know, over 3,200 babies die every day in abortion chambers for the sake of so-called choice. There's a real urgency to what we do. And the more you understand that, the more anguish you realize that women go through, and fathers too, I counsel post-abortive fathers, uh, you understand that we really need to stop abortion. We need to protect not only the babies, but the parents, the grandparents, the aunts and uncles, the siblings, and the sphere of people around, whoever chooses abortion, it's like a cancer, it affects everyone. You know, every year at Catholic TV, we, um, we cover the March for Life, particularly the youth rally, and it's wonderful to see young people. Your sons, I'm sure, are great advocates for life, too. Yes, and especially the one who's given us two granddaughters. We really like that part. But uh, they understand the importance of without the right to life, that basic life, that you have nothing. And what is so encouraging is when we go to the March for Life in D.C., that two-thirds at least are 25 or younger and that is a phenomenal thing to see it really gives you encouragement and hope that we're going to win this battle because so many people raising up and coming through the ranks are pro-life but but one of the reasons for that is we pro-lifers are having babies we're not aborting them and we thought eventually we're going to outnumber them and uh, be able to rule the day on the abortion issue Brad, where can people find out more about your great work? Well, we have a website for the TV program called FacingLife.tv. Uh, if you've missed the program or want to catch some back issues, you can go there and view that. We also have a valuable giveaway at the end of each program, and we direct viewers there to register to receive that. We also provide additional information on each episode with uh, links of resources that we're covering that day. So a wealth of information is available at FacingLife.tv. We also have our main website for Life Issues Institute that sponsors the program, and that's LifeIssues.org. And there's a wealth of information. We usually get between 500 and 600,000 hits every month. So we have a lot of people from around the world taking advantage of all the information we have to share there. Brad, thanks so much for being with us, and keep up the great work, and thank you for allowing us to put your great program on Catholic TV. Well, we appreciate the partnership in saving lives. Thanks, guys. Okay, God bless Brad and your family, too. And people can watch Facing Life Head On on Catholic TV at Tuesday at 6 p.m., mm -hmm. Thursday, uh, 5.30 a.m. and 5 p.m., and Friday at 1.30 and you can see just what a great program it was. A great work that yeah, Brad's and doing. A, and a great man, too. It, it, you need um, powerful advocates like that in the church and society so that we can protect the precious gift of life. Mm -hmm. Another great man is Kevin Nelson, and we will see him right after this break. Stay with us. A lot more of This is a Day to Come. We'll be right back. <laughs>